Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here today and to be able to introduce our guest speaker. We have a truly outstanding and insightful individual as our speaker today, and this should be a terrific uh, event where you learn a lot and you have a nice meal and you're with friends as well. So this is going to be a wonderful uh, afternoon. Today's speaker is Richard Duzak, uh, MD, who is Chief Executive Officer of the Harvey L. Neiman Health Policy Institute and practices diagnostic and interventional radiology with Mid-South Imaging and Therapeutics. Dr. Duzak currently serves on the American Medical Association CPT editorial panel and was recently reelected to its executive committee. Active for many years in the American College of Radiology, he has served as vice chair of the Commission on Economics, liaison director on the Radiology Coding Certification Board, and chair of the ACR's committee on coding and nomenclature. A lot of work he's put in for, uh, the, for the college. Dr. Duzak is a Pennsylvania native and a graduate of LaSalle University and the Pennsylvania State University College of Medicine. He completed his residency in diagnostic radiology at Duke University Medical Center and completed a fellowship in vascular and interventional radiology at the University of Pennsylvania Medical Center. Dr. Duzak uh, is a fellow of the American College of Radiology, the Society of Interventional Radiology, and the Radiology Business Management Association. He has lectured uh, frequently on a variety of topics in health policy, particularly as it pertains to medical imaging, physician payment systems, and practice management. He has authored or co-authored over 100 publications in these areas and has been recognized with numerous awards, including the Society of Interventional Radiology's Distinguished Faculty Award, the Journal of Vascular and Interventional Radiology's Distinguished Reviewer Award, Radiology Editor's Recognition Award, the Journal of the American College of Radiology's Exceptional Manuscript Review Award, and the Radiology Business Management Association's Calhoun Award. Very nice. I'm very impressed. We are honored to have Dr. Duzak deliver this year's lunch uh, to, uh, lecture on the topic, Promoting Relevancy and Value in Evolving Healthcare Delivery Systems. This should be a very important talk. Rich? Thank you, Harvey, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I know we're going to, um, it's a little bit awkward to um, be both speaker and uh, participant um, as um, uh, food is being served, um, and uh, hopefully, uh, folks, uh, as uh, things get a um, little bit more settled in with your luncheon, it'll be a little bit easier to um, uh, follow along. Um, the topic I've been asked to address this afternoon is promoting relevancy and value um, in evolving healthcare payment and delivery systems. And I think the answer, the sort of short slide here um, as to how we do that is we demonstrate our value. We know what we're doing is important to patients, it's important to patient care, but we just need to communicate that message in a credible fashion. Um, I'm delighted that this has actually been assigned one of the talks um, as part of the JCR 10-year anniversary. Um, I think as we reflect back about our journal, um, it, it really has set us up in a very nice manner um, in radiology to have taken all the concepts that we're really hearing about in Imaging 3.0, we didn't think of it as 3.0 back then, and turned them into a credible scholarly exercise. And that really puts us about a decade above uh, ahead of many of our colleagues that's going to be a great opportunity as things are changing, and I think it's really nicely set the stage um, for the college to get in the position of setting up its own health policy institute to really continue um, that legacy a bit further. Um, there, uh, I'm going to be moving fast through a lot of material this afternoon. Uh, I'd encourage you to visit our website, NeemanHPI.org. A lot of the deliverables uh, that we've started producing and will continue to produce um, are available there. Um, Heather Curry will be, you know, keeping with our social media piece here, um, be live tweeting some pieces, including some links and some supplemental information for those of you who have been following the meet meeting on Twitter, and I would encourage you to do that. There's been some great conversation at hashtag AMCLC2000. Um, um, 13. Um, so I know that these lunch lectures are always tough here, and so um, I'm going to go through what I think are sort of the three most important pieces of information I'd like to convey to you over the next 45 minutes here, um, and the rest hopefully will fill in some of the blanks here. When you step back and look at where healthcare payment policy is going, the six P's to remember um, are on this slide. 
x-axis is time, the, z, uh, the y-axis is value and risk. And so as we move from current models to future models, we have opportunities for bringing about additional value. What that means, however, is there's the potential for additional risk to us and our health systems. And so in the new environment, risk brings with it the opportunity of things going bad, but it also brings about new opportunities for things going very well. Think about Move My Cheese, one of the themes from this morning. And so our current payment system is based upon doing procedures. We are moving into an era very quickly where we will get paid for taking care of patients over encounters and periods of time. And if we ever get there, and you heard uh, Dr. James allude to this yesterday, the goal is to start moving us into a population health model. And I'll spend some time in the latter part of my talk going through those and talk with you about some of the HPI work in each of those areas there. Slide number two for the stuff you gotta pay attention to. In the future, here's my prediction. Incomes will be based on outcomes. Currently, incomes are based on outputs, and this is changing, and the people who understand this concept are going to be well positioned to move forward in new healthcare delivery systems to be the winners, because the change moving forward is such that there will be winners and potentially losers. The winners are gonna catch this point here. The third piece, Again, it gets back to the move my cheese message that we've been hearing is a quote from Jack Welsh. Face reality as it is, not as it was, or as you wish it to be. Um, we heard about Moorfield 2.0 this morning. I think the reason that Jim was so luminary for doing so many things for the college is he faced the reality of change at that point. And that's really the challenge that's before us at this point is to identify the reality. Because once you see the reality, the solutions become much more clear. And so what I'd like to do um, over the remainder of my time is spend a little bit of time introducing the uh, Neiman Health Policy Institute. You heard from Dr. Ellen Bogan on Sunday what, why it is we were founded and what it is we're going to be doing. Share with you some highlights as are some of our very early work. Um, we just, uh, I mean, I didn't find out about the Neiman HPI. I didn't even know what it was called until August, but I didn't even find out about it until this meeting uh, last year. So we really are moving pretty quickly um, with this whole uh, process, but I'm, I'm proud to be able to have a really good team um, and I uh, think we've got some good early uh, work to share with you. And then I'll spend the second half of my time talking about evolving physician payment systems, specifically talking about work that your college is supporting through the Neiman HPI in each of these various models to position us potentially for the Moorfield 2.0 Eureka uh, down the road that will hopefully serve us well for another 20 years. So the Neiman HPI, you heard from Paul on Sunday, we were established uh, last summer by the ACR to study the role and value of radiology and radiologists, two different things. Um, in evolving healthcare delivery and payment systems. So we want to look at where things are now. We want to be working in the area of the future. So we're living in a bunch of different spaces. And our focus is going to be on value-based approaches to medical imaging as an integral component of longitudinal patient care. That's pretty much imaging 3.0. And so this is demonstrating the value of all these 3.0 concepts you're hearing about at this meeting. V, the V word, we've heard this a lot at this meeting. I've heard it more at this meeting than it, probably all my AMCLCs combined, and that's great. A lot of definitions here. Short one, outcomes divided by cost. Cost, a lot of ways of looking at it. The primary way that we've been looking at cost is to the payers. Um, you know, people say it's not about the money. When they say that, it is about the money. And that's really where we need to be focusing some of our efforts right now. And that's where our early efforts are going. But outcomes, outcomes are really hard to measure in imaging. Think about all the downstream variables that happen between the time you interpret an examination and what happens down the road. And so I think at least in the short term, the best thing that we can do is really start aggressively looking at a bunch of different surrogates of outcomes, things that are measures of quality, and you see them listed here on the slide. In short, we're talking about bang for the buck here. And that's really what we need to be doing to demonstrate um, our relevance. So the focus of our work is to provide a foundation for credible evidence-based policy as it pertains to medical imaging. A few words there I've highlighted. Foundation. We can't be doing it all. I'll tell you about our shop in a few minutes. It's a real small team. Um, but we do want to catalyze this whole process so that this goes organic and viral within the radiology community. It's got to be credible. It's got to be evidence-based. You know, if, if we lose our credibility in sending these messages of our deliverables out there, the whole shop falls apart here. And I think that's going to be really important in our messaging. And it's to promote a better understanding of efficient, effective use of imaging resources. And you see the three points listed here. We didn't just make those up. That's the Don Berwick triple aim here. We want to align our goals as much as we can in your interest 
aligned with what the thought leaders in Washington and the policymakers are doing. The better we align that, the better we resonate, and the more we're likely to succeed. Now, there's a whole long story we could spend whoever wants to hang out at the bar this evening over the birth of the HPI. It's already turning into a little bit of an urban legend. Uh, Larry Muroff, our uh, gold medalist, uh, claims that uh, he, uh, I don't know if he quite, it's gotten almost to the point where he stopped the ski lift and wouldn't let it go until Paul agreed to move this forward at a meeting at Vail uh, last year. But I think it, it relates to that meeting here where, um, uh, Har uh, I'm sorry, Larry, in all his wisdom, made the case and said that the college has an obligation to be doing for its members what they can't do individually for themselves. And so you heard this again from Dr. Ellen Bogan on Sunday. The ACR should support efforts so that individual members and practices can act appropriately as these new things come forward. It's great to say, you know what, the cheese is moving, but we do need to tell people, here's at least a little bit of guidance as to how to get through that new maze. We also need to provide the staff credible evidence-based information for ACR staff and our many, many volunteers so that they're armed with as many tools as possible in an environment in which anecdotes tend to drive things here. A key piece in structuring this, and this still come, continues to be an issue as we're going through our evolution here, is to remain arm's length from our advocacy efforts here. You know, we can sort of crank out stuff that sort of is messaging, but again, that'll probably have some long-term win, but we're looking for, uh, I'm sorry, short-term wins, but we're looking for long-term wins here. And ultimately, the goal here and the commitment I've gotten from leadership of the college is it's going to be the credible evidence-based policy and information that's going to drive the future um, initiatives of the college rather than the other way around. That's dealing with reality and that's what we need to be doing here. Um, this is sort of our work, and so while you heard from Geraldine and her team, they're off in the back here fighting the fires. Um, some of us were lured into saying, oh, take a sip from this fire hydrant here, um, and then somebody turned uh, the, um, the spigot on. Um, and so it's been an interesting ride, um, but uh, a real fun ride in doing some of the stuff. I'm really blessed to be working with a luminary group of folks as our board of directors, just you know, some of the absolute thought leaders within our specialty, some of the hardest working people um, that I know, um, and that uh, uh, should reassure you you that uh, we've got some really smart people involved in our process that are really thinking about our future here. Really our commitment, and this is sort of our mission to things, is without real data, good data, there is no analysis. And so while some of our initial work um, has focused on traditional um, data sources, Medicare stuff I'll talk with you about, we're trying to be a little bit innovative here in reaching out to new data sources. And while bigger may be better, I think we all realize that the early bird catches the worm. And so we started partnering with a couple big billing companies. They've given us access, a lot of politics and HIPAA issues to work around. You know, one project we've got right now, 19 million million radiology claims from about a thousand different radiologists. So, so some real numbers, hopefully, that will start producing some real credible uh, information moving forward. Our, our first line data source is the stuff that I think most of you are familiar with Dave Levin um, and his shop, really, you know, real pioneers in this field, the um, physician supplier procedure summary master files from Medicare just as a sort of reference big picture, an annual data set when you order it from CMS shows up on your doorstep um, on a DVD. Where we've started working is within the 5% limited data sets. These cost a lot more money to buy. You have to pay ongoing license fees. There's lots of data use agreements. I'm making this the point that this isn't easy stuff to get, and the college has committed some pretty significant resources to developing this infrastructure. This stuff literally arrives on a hard drive for you, and it takes months of analyst work to start unpacking um, here. Um, but the concept that we want to get into, this is the buzzword for those of you who aren't data geeks here, is big data. This is the stuff that Nate Silver made famous in the last election here. These are data sets that are so large, so complex, that the processing is not stuff you can do in Access or Excel. You need to develop non-traditional analytical perspectives and tools. And so we've had to set up an architecture with a server, platforms, a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, you run these data sets and staff goes home for the weekend and comes back on Monday and either has some information or says, gee, we wrote the code wrong because it's a learning process here. Um, let's start over again. This is a lot of work from a really committed staff here. Perspective. A single year, and we've got three contiguous years now, we're building that here, a single year 5% data file from CMS has as much data, if you put it in paper terms, as 2,200 major metropolitan area telephone books. In paper terms, that is a ton of data literally here. So we're talking about multiple years of that, tons of data here. And so some people liken big data analyses to finding needles in haystacks. We've taken a bit of a different approach here and say, you know what, if you look at it that way, you just get overwhelmed by the data. 
The haystack's all made of needles because these databases are individual patients. They're your mom or your uncle, and we can follow them for three years. Obviously, redacted information about who the patient is, the provider is, that tells us, you know, who did they see, what happened downstream. So amazing potential for mining, but you have to have the infrastructure to do that. A key concept here um, that continues to be an issue for us is we're sort of saying, hey, this is great, we can do this stuff. There's a big difference between data and information. Just because you buy this stuff from CMS, this isn't like Quicken. You type it in and poof, it does all the budgeting. Um, they've got the architecture and the infrastructure. So when we get things, we get you know a whole bunch of ones and zeros here. Um, and we've had to put together a bit of our own geek squad here, um, a combination of a really talented group of folks to be able to work together to navigate the mixed areas of economics, data, uh, clinical pieces here. And so I'm really delighted to have a great team of some folks that we're still in the process of assembling. We'll actually be fully staffed under our budget in a couple more weeks here. Um, here's our staff. Now, while it looks reasonable size, um, there's only four folks who are boots on the ground in Remf, uh, in, um, in Reston. Um, Marty Dodu, um, to your left. D um, Danny Hughes is our director of research, PhD, um, you know, one of the most energetic and I know. Uh, Eugene's degree in economics, uh, master's degree in biostatistics, mixed people. And so a lot of our, how do we put our together to start thinking about partnering with other people to lead clinically to what our can deliver for you. Got, uh, I'm half time. Uh, Rinzel Spraggs from the Pam Casting, as many of you know from next, that work for us as a their time. And so enterprise, um, we've doing laying down the track while the trains, um, and obviously if the train is a little bit of an issue, particularly when you're, and so we've had to put a bunch of break of great ideas um, and deliberate um, in the infrastructure, but providing content. Um, and so I'd like to share with you a little work um, that's um, come out. Um, just a little bit of background. CR had a uh, social department. We are current services, now some of those services, um, but a lot of the data behind the scenes for the RUC, for CRS to CMS, is still pretty much on the average day we have those types of things. And so this is in doing. Um, if you're some kind of policy institute here in D.C., you know, you're out there creating the pyramid, you've launched a policy brief station, Neiman HPI, first couple policy briefs, you know, balanced. I mean, it's really hard for somebody like me doing advocacy stuff to advocate when you write this, but we have um, in doing this kind of stuff. Attention, we've really tried as much as possible relations firm, they're in the health, and so we've been very successful. You know, all the imaging journals I've done, I've had interviewed about 50 reporters, so we're out of our shop, but our guide of the imaging community, a little bit of a slower process, they're picking up on that, um, actually picked up on us, um, honorable way, um, and we've been picked up by congressional, uh, and so that's the space we're getting to when you have to get to the audiences, we want so that we can, in incredible leaders um, and payers, as well, in the health policy world, people that are doing data, and some of them actually are not radio. and so a lot of the challenges you've heard have come out of, for example, the dark that you know, some, a lot of people have a real anti. You had to try to respond to that to say, you know what, if you're looking for anything among Medicare beneficiaries on the website here, you have to look at the indications. Some, sometimes it's bad. Thoughtful and deliberate, make meaningful um, things, um, that will guide our future. Gain as much credibility in the physician community. Important when we talk about some of our. We're delighted that we got picked up. AMA News. Uh, front. I mean, that's good attention. Full players in this space. Sort of. Gee, let's let's talk about things that which is CMS payment. And the other key um, can be responsive to, and we really as members here, remember Larry, members do things that they can't. And so some of our work it has been focused towards you can take back in your practice um, as much as possible, work with the fee for service while at the same time to be as successful as you can models. And so under the new, isn't just Geraldine and our show into CMS and say, hey, we negotiated something and suddenly show up in your paychecks. We're individually in our administrate value, and so they'll be giving you tools that value at the local level. My system to local will be winners in the people that are and the people that choose to ignore. We do need to leverage over here, and in my perfect, one employed in 10 years because we can the kinds of research organic within the radiology can up a very modest program. Again, information on the pretty quickly with some of this stuff. A couple weeks ago, our first grants, 275 picks, so some projects from some competitive process, our first time missions um, for six much on a fast track so that we'd be um, for you um, adding at least double that with regard to interest uh, for a uh, cycle here. And so we're fishing with a small shop of people that we teach to fish, that benefits us all. Most of our work, um, you know, our big several years is to really theology is going to the modeling system. This is sorting, you know, more field two point on the curve before everybody else opportunities. Um, a graph a few times from a couple meeting. I think Geraldine just showed it. There's a really nice um, a, a Morton lecture uh, for nerds in here where we've got y axis is viability and is done about as well as you can. Um, you know, we've just been to fall apart. And really sure is this value curve. We'll deal with a, an issue here horizontally from curve. You're going to be in this concept here, what Clayton Christensen's referred to, to take some risk. You know, the, the 
was successful. And so the challenge to get that gap, um, members are going to have, I actually, again, this is a, a delighted that Bruce asked me to bring in. This is the graphics your press helped me with here is to, to really try to make, this is not elective to move from starting up a new business. Waves out in Hawaii, great surfing exercise. We've all seen the videos of for who miscalculates. I mean, here, when that wave, and we do need to be cognizant. I'll stick here. I, I, I actually been some of the stuff you heard this morning. You know, we do need to figure out a that current wave and find a lot of people haven't even identified the opportunities are. Again, you know, some messages are, you know, the content is going to be bringing back to our part targeted. The National Commission of, um, headed by, you know, a re of some thought leaders here, there. People are targeting cardiology. And, you know, most of 10% cut in our salary. The reality is that every that bottom line, who's that? And so if we want to move to generate salaries that are in a value-based environment that we're worth, Obviously, that's a challenge, but again, in reports like this, customer service is going to be dead in believing that's truly happened. I, to some extent, hybrid model. Uh, you know, here's the opportunity. It was bad. Doesn't quite know what there's an opportunity for. And so we are, in, um, and you know, we are going to fee for value. How exactly will progress is not entirely. Second half of my talk, what I'd like are um, some old models that are out there. You and these are things that are core. Dr. McGinty talked about of us strategic planning. You know, the research shop are coordinated in a firewall between advocacy. We're still good friends, and we still efforts have to be aligned. Being moving forward are things that ourselves for full information infrastructure depending upon how these things evolve. Sort of short answer here is the will be a hybrid of multiple or scan sort of all of these so we calls. Again, the sixth here today is we're moving from percent to populations. Value, value is the big, but it also creates increased risk is the key piece here and the best to know what's on the other side of the can and make the best decisions. You do these one by one here. Familiar with the current fee for sure here. Um, in a nutshell, transactional delivery of this are waiting rooms actually lined up for whatever. Not, um, come in, get your cash register here, it might as well here. And, you know, it is under this evolutionary form level. It's worked. It, it's not the best model. But it is getting paid for proceed, getting paid for event. Going with some of this down, down some of these distinctions. You know, Zeke and his team did out. And it is a fight. I care. You know, they're making the just provides a portable chest. Real case, but it might as well be some kind of report that they generate. Film and last week's film about this. And we've got mean it's the buzzwords that you heard from here. And we get paid for that in 85 cents. The per service, and I have done this um, in my consult like this. History follow up, disease all unchanged, gibberish. You know, how quickly can I reach it? What does fee for service? Dollars 85 cents. Your goal is to crank out as this is what you're providing. Yeah. Now, there's a lot in our space in fee for service, is resources wisely. Cities, and again, Dr. Sorning was some of the complex. My goal is not to confuse you. So we could go chasing after EA that this whole model is to go after the best. We're not going to attack the complex sustainable growth rate. The operator in this transitional period get specialty car valuable growth rate in good faith forward in epi environments, that's, let's mitigate that gap as much as we can. But that being time, and I think the college is going to, in the advocacy and the research, get some of the confounders here. Every saga of MPP, you know, I read it, a, a, a thing I read an abdominal ultrasound. As of last year, there was a disposed of efficiencies. One of my neuro partners reads one other a few hours later to, because of the efficiencies that in that process. And when we were still dabbling around with um, Bib Allen took the first peer-reviewed project about saying, you know, CMS is out percent reduction here. Things with a group, a, you know, a um, methodology here and said no efficiencies, but they're an order. Of, we only got 25 percent. Would have wanted. We would have liked zero. This kind of information when coordinated with our advocate. R2 just released in the J9 uh, recently. Again, working with the team here, and now for the, your discount from your part, some efficiencies you can get if we want. Probably about week difference. Mm, that's that's what you're going to the hill for. And stuff here. Well, setting the bar that we want from CMS moving forward. It's easy to point the blame at everybody. Opportunities in these value and we do better here. Who over the talks in the last couple of days, we have met the enemy. And, um, and, and in this environment, faster, you know, we're not leaving reasonable. And so in our education, for a few years, we've had struggle while well, somebody else is doing. And this is some of our early data part, uh, with our sites or to HPI, you know, some 13 million, uh, 100,000 through natural ultrasound. And find that about the dominant ultrasound uh, ones are incompletely documented, which is 5.5%. Of so some of the opportunities to money under fee for service to do some of the stuff you've heard this morning, structure because there is a dollar return. I could spend a whole separate lecture, pay for performance. I'm just here again to just show you.
to the space of some of the I think most familiar to most of us in quality reporting systems, not upon the quality of your tea or perceived quality in your report. And we're all familiar with fluoro time, those type of inquiries from members, the critics department about people me doing it, is there going to be any? We actually got access to see data, um, a last analysis focused on rate. The results were very in bad news. Mean diagnostics under PQRS got about 20, it's not chump change, 23.7% um, for a bonus. Lots of opportunities, 16.3% better. The other sort of big in this, and I'm not going to go into detail, to ask your billing company, history reporting rather than technical stuff, but those other bonuses, 4.4, statistically significant they reporting here. Um, again, moving my chi, that is quo model upon a real uh, model moving forward. With, when this turns into a penalty percent of radiologists, well, $2,600, look at the total dollar amount, a million dollars. And so, to me, is the first project that five so far peer reviewed out of our shop because this, if you do this three times your ACO, I mean, you just have to do one here. But in the numerals, the utensils, but we can't, that's the real paradigm change, change we're going to have to bring back. Episodic bundling is where, um, in my opinion, because the new frontiers and that opportunities. And so we're moving patients to populate. Eve's here, events, just looking at a CT scan, some time course. The area where we focus most on our hospitals and our health or the inpatient, most of us have heard from our hospital in the length of stay, readmit, doesn't get a lot of discussion. Communities on the quality side, improve our services, turn around days out as soon as possible. The hospital gets a bundle diagnosis related. Group still been paid under fee for service. Inpatient payment models are involved in this thing. Payment that they need to fight out a patient length of stay. Why? Where are you on the food chain? And so when you look down the break, patient spending, this is some common DRG, COPD. Most of the spend, as you'd expect, is spent on hospital. Seven to ten percent. Non-dimensional wisdom, particularly from physicians, you guys really don't matter. But if you think pulling the levers for all that, we heard obviously that it's a team, but who has control over you doing the test? Physicians, physicians, consultants. Who's doing, the, who, who's impacted or not doing the follow-up in the office? You see the power I think we collectively have is, hasn't been realized here. Hospital administrators are framing the models. We've got our slide. Gee, we've been dealing with that. Fox fight out that other little challenge, I think, in the conventional approach. Radiology red or we here? Um, question that we need to be asking. Different questions, because these aren't lice. Drives the, and so what if we could take? We heard 50% waste. We've heard some. What if it's 50 number? Whatever it is. We, remember, this is paid one fix. Some of that, the value proposition is back to the hospital. You tell your local employers, you get your refund or keep your rate or rate. And of course, we're not going to do that action here if we're dry. And so we've been telling our the table the real question because what, what should your share be? No, nobody knows that in point um, here. And that so let me run through you uh, scenario: your hospital, your health, with the biggest payer in town. And there's going to be all physician services. The body into a room, and you know what? You guys figure out it's going to be worse than a ruck meeting. I mean, it's going to turn into a bad situation. It's going to be political. Let everybody yell and scream tantrums, and all of a sudden, somebody comes really quietly, thoughtfully, and says, "I've got some robust nationally a million Medicare claims, rank order by DRG for CPT codes that look at a physician spending. We're we national peers in other so while these folks are all add a slice of the pie, I only my specialty slice of the pie. You're giving them 10 percent. What proposition here? The wind help you save money on the other side piece. To that no risk in that situation who's now and so in my mind that we get okay batteries working here um, to value information this is an opportunities under the new model the information the old models who controls the patients and the new the data and the info data doesn't exist well my team here I've been in our cubicle for six months data here and we let her out and putting together this architecture um, we're proud to launch um, a version alpha for those of you this is demonstration purpose this for risk bearing contract um, to show you what's at DRG, healthpolicyr.org, or it's on the front. And so you can click, for example, data, imaging spent, type in the search function. That's got a lot of imaging associations and comorbidity. Find data here, for example, tiles here, gives you a significance of the sample, seven, and the mean part A in those encounters on average, $1,600 here. Piece here, this is part A data. It's so not physician side where these pieces of the big data. We're hoping, and then, you know, in the next year, we're going to have some associated bids. We're actually talking about how to consultants and to those. So I would say in these scenarios, who's you're the boss. You are the But again, the tools here, but you can't, can't send Dr. McGinty out to negotiate these types of things. It's going to re be, require a real say, you know, how are we um, new data pieces? And then, you know, some of the themes are sounding the same. This fits with imaging just getting in the trenches, because once we know these bench, how do we improve the value of all these types of three points expensive for something? Each other with these new tools here, the, the, the cost needs action. Now, big crowds make a difference. Specialty societies, at least that I'm really dealing with this space, and some discussions with the American C the College of American You know what? Well, the clinical food fight, what if we find a model? This is how you pay for it. Suddenly, you're not at the patients. You've got your cost um, services. It does this. You know, I mean, yes, of number crunching, hard piece. We can crank this for price. 
remember, value for our dues here. We don't, we're not going to, and so there are some potential market ACR in this. Step, and again, a lot of this, this is going to go, but now we're talking people. We're taking on risk of population health, and so we should to populations, opportunities for value, health, those types of things, um, risk as well. Counters now to term relationships, and there's a lot of ways that you hate under these models. Capitation all over again. Capitate every service. You could probably capitate primary care physicians, but instead of it, it, the practice, bundle payments for, I think that's going to be a big, fee for service is going to have things like emergency service, some form or another. Again, I don't know exactly how that plays the infrastructure for that. Performance stacking, all these pieces together here. And we're entirely unclear here. It's going to be a building block approach. In this is let's start assembling. You've got the erector set. We've got the pieces. These models evolve. We've been looking at, um, we've heard yesterday, huge, and there's been a few people who've dabbled. It'd be real important for practice specific areas if they're going to be involved. So here's my home state. It's down to the state level here. Managing per benefit spend. The number isn't as important. Um, this is Part B for the state of Tennessee for a year and change. And you say, oh, well, good. That's not good enough in these theater. Go to the bottom left, Coley County, 213 right, Knoxville. Um, so we've got a $50 dip, comp reasonably comparable, more different than that. County, our immediate contiguous in, 276 jump up $60. Contiguous rural county from not $131. Two very similar, double the cost. Conventional wisdom, when I, when I ask a lot of audiences, rather assume risk. Most where people are taking good care of, it's a good place to be practicing. Assume risk is, you know, James yesterday, where there's very opportunities. And so the new person starts thinking about his practice, Medicare Advantage data, care on um, patients, percent of Medicare. Here, 70 or, or dollars, some 20 percent, and some utilization. Where's the quality? It's in that top. The, the, this is this is we heard about that concept yesterday. Yeah. Risk and why you take on that county is you focus on the most what expensive, what care, imaging care, and quality. You figure out money to support your systems. Your proposition back to you to that tier makes process and reinvest in the system better and better um, concepts for a lot of physicians. We need to be lead up to continue to be six to be leaders in our health system. Technology, a rel um, moving this on. Ability is going to be absolutely key on the dollar side because thinking about um, right now, economic incentives and a two by cost to drive everybody down. The challenge is going to be keep honor here where it's high quality to low quality. Um, so there's going to be other that are going to be important um, about some of the in track for the HPI of knowledge resources. So while I tell up to meaningful structured reporting about the back end of this, which is as much information word as possible. These are set it up so that this similar conversation vision support with ACR select for this individual patient back end being how do we develop dating basically a de process and then can valid prove it moving along. Equation here is outcomes or efforts have been on cost where we have to deal with it and later, you know, the bank down the road. Um, overwhelmed, I'm sure, as an individual to do this kind of big data mine. It doesn't have to be big. If you're in a report, that's the crummy report. Change your practice to having people reports. You can do cool stuff that's doing the equivalent of an the referring physicians, you know, stars versus one star, that, um, and setting up to measure that. You can get that information.
That's important because that sets the foundation under three collectively developing models. Obviously, a zillion opportunity on the clinic, but we can't just do it. We're moving forward here. Up here, quality and we'll go. Quality maybe our is going to be our future here. Really great ride on this professionally and phase peaked, and it's and staying the course become opposition. The good news based reality is that there's a new distance, and the the real is most people haven't yet seen it. huge opportunities to and run on that wave. Now, I don't know, and I'm going to be as good or as big or sexy as the old one. Potential for us and important. And so the way that I think that we make from the old wave to the information, and I thank you for your attention. Um, my apologies, and Harvey had to uh, airplane, but in honor of the year anniversary again, so I'm, Dr. Hillman is on the JACR anniversary at occasion, and Health Policy Institute, it just was uh, labeled as Neiman, Inst number one, Harvey's credibility and honoring Harvey for radiology. So around the ACR and Institute. So I think the quality of Rich's in here today that uh, this the um, college has had in the past 10 years, and it's reflective and certainly brings the uh, team to the organization. Great presentation, likes worth of Q&A and downstairs, and we'll start the hearings a little bit early in the microphone session. I'd like to come to the microphone and Ask me rain or shine right announcement, is that correct? Right. Uh, all enclosed. Uh, Rich, uh, I'm going to uh, put out a, uh, I think it's a good together with the pathologist, but I'm old enough to the 19. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I think one thing we need to distinguish is to become, and if we, by we align ourselves with hospital based physicians, it must be identified again. Ancillary services where we don't. Um, I'll give you a my experience in the um, similar animal care organizations in the next. bundled payments, div division of the pie. My hospital, uh, and that the people who we lining ourselves were specialists. Um, a money battle, and the specialists. Ourselves with the specialists, their service, and we did. Thank you. And a good um, piece. And misrepresent that we've made any. A lot of this is sort of dab that these folks you know, infrastructure to be able to, but the, the architecture allows us to slice dice, whether it's, and so, you know, obviously those who we wind up partnering with patients and would obviously require full discussion on um, partnering um, and doing the group that we want or. Is that Rich, that, that was a fab, I really enjoyed it. Obviously relates to diagnostic imaging and radiation. The, the, both the qu and the answers, I think, are radiation oncology process for, for diagnostic. Um, but the answer is a data set. So, you know, or are you doing ecology space? You know, we've made a decision to snub anybody. It's what can we do and bang for the buck um, expertise um, and uh, um, as um, quickly as possible for as many of them. In doing this is not to snub radiology, uh, radiation. On. Start developing the architecture from here. There's going to be a zillion. When we get to the pair, at that point, we're definitely going to, you know, even mining, for example, I mean, knowing what's, what's going to um, for example, pretty significant changes. The questions, they have to be just things we know. Uh, there's certainly no intent, and I, we're being dismissed here. How far the train can go and the tracks being laid down. Forward. I was on the Institute as well as the day. I shared uh, a concern if you had the emergency, you could come up with rape. And I, yeah. <laughs> my other question, though, really, I think the, the concept that you talk about credibility is key. Early days of literature that with very sound foundation on dispute is tainted because of the received source. And how you had arm's length from the. But how can we make our that it is out from a specialty interest? That's a great question, Bill. Thank you. You know, I, I think. We're always going to have the, you know, the fact that the HPR name attached to it, uh, CR, um, and incredible sh shops, the um, AAFP, uh, I think do that uh, reason. For us, I think with that is trying to, you know, that firewalls with nomenclature and all those types for our shop, um, you know, who goes to the hill, who does um, who doesn't, but I think an ongoing work and process of how to work together, um, but still, the most important piece, though, is data mining. You know, if we use CMS that's reproducible, and tricks, and this is public, don't do their own shop and reproduce, who sent them the message, but they get the message. Um, we're always going to have that baggage in use I've done with reporters so far, going to, to dance around that um, with the arms length, ongoing struggle for us. Uh, if the ACR doesn't do this, no. Yes, sir. Rich, I, want, I wanted to thank you because important initiatives. And my question are HPI DR. What's the timeline point oh and is that you need to possible? 
And as I heard, it was timetable as fast as possible. Yeah, you know, stuff with a, um, out actually, um, it's the um, app, which is really cool. Hopefully not while you're this afternoon. Um, uh, you know, the people that did that, now was it super me, the analytics you need to sit down? This is really a lot able, but the architect analytics moving forward, really, really tough to project. I mean, we, you know, even experienced in, in web, there are bugs. In fact, crisis like Friday, the cert was down, and it's like, oh my God. So I, I, I would just appropriate to, but our goal is we will have a part um, we want to measure that B, which is what your slide quickly as we can. But we, with regard to how CMS, the, the items aren't quite lined. I can't give you a timetable, but we're moving priority item. Thank More you. questions is what I've been told. So, Dr. Thank you. Really add my voice to the chorus to our members and and, and you for the effort. the out the your formula of come over cost. I think applies not only to think about which is have a better outcome for the patient, but there's the end as well. So some of the other graph where all and where the costs come, we can enterprise more successful and have a price by doing perhaps and not less, sure. doing it than later. And that will allow us to go enterprise, not only our hospital and others do better. So for just from the ways you where you think it's something that helps us all about what our value of care and not focusing on specific uh, interpretation. Thanks, Alan. And I think that the perspective there and this up is obviously we're focusing got to focus on. We have to get um, at this point. Is if we're going to be moving, we move the envelope that is today and get the really critical for us to develop other things. And a lot of those other thinking about um, are things to be able to measure at the. There's going to be a lot of centers on the road moving forward because shops get that information that we're not dealing with right now. Um, but but a good point you made. Thank you. So, uh, of the institute um, uh, that we as the board looking at. So I want to know in advance that this is a research analyst shop that's just going to produce stuff that uh, either down I'm going to be looking at to imaging and in seeing some of that credibility, articles from the institute under use of Memogram, Alabama, well not just Alabama, in rural counties in the United States, see articles that imaging not as college would like for us is the ability. If everything that just looks like the same old uh, the college economics, we're not going to have that credit. The reasons that the Graham Institute is separating themselves from because they're in a different, the same floor as their advocacy, uh, AAFP Central, because they've been able to sort of what are the advocates, what are these things. So you're back and we have our, our the board sort of dividing in. This is going to be a truly institute, not just how do we get all the back, it's not part of it, but I just want to end. That credibility, credible. Well, you have to. We're going down that road. So thank, thank you, Bib. And you know, I should have his vision. Um, seeing this from that um, um, ride operations and getting this up and go. Pleased to be working with him in this. Good point that I probably should have uh, um, as well. But we do have to engage in ethical. Re we're not, we are not going where we know there's a highly unfavorable answer. A resource is there. Somebody know that. Um, well, you need to be engaging in ethical re question. We find you know we can't just say oh. We're um, and so to be throwing out, you know, the, the hits for, for you need to recognize that some stuff comes in some of the spin. You know, deal with reality as it is. But uh, good, good point. So clearly a point brilliant and I want to dedication and talents that you bring to our practices. So thank you very much. Thanks for me do this. Meet in the ballroom at 125. We're going to committee four and these one. We'll see you in the ballroom.